What's up, you guys? What's up, YouTube? It is your boy JB, and we are here tonight with the review for Growing Up Hip Hop. This is season um, season six, episode seven, and the episode was titled "Light Everything Ablaze." You guys. Now, before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel, and you're not already subscribed to the channel, then do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell button, and stop checking me out on dates and not paying for it. Now, I will say, you guys, at this at the end of this episode, it was a little triggering for me because of some stuff that I've been through. But without further ado, let's get into this review. All right, you guys. So the episode opens up with Boogie. So we see Boogie. He's in L.A. and he's invited Savannah over to the crib. So Boogie is trying to see what it is between him and Savannah. He's trying to see what the vibe is. There is no vibe. This is a storyline. Let's be real with each other. So Savannah gets to the crib. She asks him, like, she looks at the food that he's put out. She's like, is this what we're eating? He says, <laughs> no, it was. So then she asks him if he's coming to Twist Party. He says, no, nah, I'm not going to be able to make it to Twist, Twist Party because I'll be in Vegas. We'll discuss that in a little bit, too. So then she asks him, so what's up? What happened between you and Brianna? So he says at the anniversary party, Brianna was drunk as hell, basically. But then he talk, he tells her that, you know, he pulled up on Brianna after that. And Brianna just basically lit into him for absolutely no reason. So he tells, she flipped out on him. So he tells her that, you know, what he wants to do is he wants to try to get Brianna some help, you know, rehab. And she was like, why? Why? What makes you qualify for that? He was like, well, you know, because she, you know, did an intervention for me. And she was like, what is she doing an intervention with you for? He was talking about pills and lean. And it's, now I know when it comes to reality TV, when new people come onto the show, I know that they're supposed to pretend as if the show like doesn't exist or that they never watched the show. But I'm like, Savannah, I know you at least went back. And if you didn't, if you never watched the show, I know you at least went back and, you know, got some knowledge of the show. So, in a nutshell, She's not his, he's not her type. No, she's not his type. No, he's not her type. But yeah. So then we see this event that Twist is having. So the event that Twist is having is for some slippers that he's he's put together. So then we see Lil Easy and his wife, they head into the party. And Lil Easy is talking to her about this mess that's surrounding TT. You know, the fact that Sandy and Egypt and that raggedy ass Don have put it out there that Sean was allegedly cheating on TT, right? So, Savannah and Cree, they're headed there as well. So, Cree is a little uneasy about going to his party because you guys remember at the last, at the um, anniversary party, they got into it with one another. So then Cree asks, you know, Savannah about Boogie and she says Boogie's not her type. She says her type is a rich nigga. Her words, not mine. So then they talk about TT and, you know, the situation once again between TT, Egypt, Pep, you know, Sandy and all them. And they just hope that at this point with Vanessa going to talk to her that the situation has been deaded. You would think it is, but we'll discuss that because it was very interesting. All right, you guys, so you remember I told you that Boogie said he wasn't going to Twist Party because he was going to be out there in Vegas, right? Welp, he's in Vegas, and he's with Samantha. Child, when I saw him on my screen, I wanted to throw up. So, Samantha asked Boogie, like, what's, what's going on with you? So, Boogie says, you know, he's trying to open up a new rehab facility or a sober living. So, then he asked him about Savannah. And Boogie says, you know, Savannah, she is, you know, a little too young for me. I was like, you knew that before you even tried to get involved with her, but whatever. So then he says that there was no vibe between them. That's obvious. So, this is where I became increasingly annoyed. Because Boogie was telling him that, you know, they're going to be going out to Jamaica for, um, you know, TT and um, Sean's wedding, right? Sam has a huge hard-on for TT. 
which is disgusting to me. So here's my thing. So I guess at this point, since Sam, not my Sam, but, uh, you know, TT and Sean are going to get married in um, Jamaica. I guess now Egypt and Sam are not going to get married in Jamaica anymore. It's really stupid. It's really stupid. It's really childish to me when you just listen to when you just sit back and you listen to it. It's the most childish, dumb shit you could ever hear in your life. But whatever. You don't want to get married in Jamaica? Cool. So then we see, you know, Vanessa shows up to the party. We see Denise and JoJo show up to the party. Um, Savannah and Cree showed up. And so did Titi. So when TT showed up, it was kind of awkward at first. It was, actually, it wasn't awkward at first. It was awkward the entire time that TT was there because TT really did not interact with anybody at the party with the exception of Brianna and Twist. So um, now before TT got there, Lil Easy was talking to um, JoJo and Tanisha about the situation, right? And... I mean, it's a rumor. That's really what it is, it's a rumor. We don't know what's what. I still believe in my heart of hearts that the reason that Sandy's raggedy ass brought that raggedy ass sister of hers is to, is to spread this stuff. Like, cause what it was, was I feel like with Sandy, Sandy didn't want to look like the bad guy by being on camera talking about it. So she brought that raggedy Ann ass sister of hers on to discuss it. That's what she did. So let's see where we at. So then Brianna showed up. Brianna, you got a drinking issue. Like I get drinking in social settings, I do get that. But every time you show up somewhere, you literally go for a drink. That's a problem. Literally, that's a problem. So then we see everyone. So Twist told them to, you know, go paint something that he would, you know, he would collaborate with the best one. So then the ladies are, you know, it's the, it's the girls. So they're doing it. So they talk to, um, you know, Cree about her situation with Luke. And then in the confessional, she was telling us that her cousin that she talked to in the last episode, that he wants her to come and meet up with Luke, but she doesn't know if he told Luke about her coming. So then Brianna tells everyone that, you know, she's going to have a dinner party. Actually, she, it was just, she didn't tell everybody. She was telling this to Twist and to Titi. And the reason why she's having this dinner party is because she heard she is off-putting. When you drink, you're definitely off-putting. Gotta be real with you. When you drink, you are a little bit off-putting, my love. So then Savannah. Savannah, um, yeah. Savannah comes off like a little bit of a gold digger. Now, I don't or I don't like the fact that, you know, peep, everyone is asking her where is she getting her money from. Like, Lil Easy was talking about the fact that when she came down to this dispensary, she spent, you know, a, a good amount of money. Dude, that's money going into your business. I don't care where it comes from. As long as it's legal tender, as long as it's legal, I ain't gotta worry about nobody being like, hey, she paid you with this money. I'm gonna have to take it back. I think the hell not. Like, as long as, you know, as long as she's not doing anything illegal and, you know, she's trying to like, you know, just as long as it's not illegal, you good. Like, I really don't understand these people. Like, that's the running gag with her. What is she doing for her money? Do I care? Absolutely not. So then, you know, Titi comes up and she talks to them, but she doesn't really address anything. I was just like, wow, this is very interesting because you got Cree right here, you got Savannah right there, and you got Vanessa. That would have been like ample opportunity to be like, hey, so, you know, Vanessa and I just, you know, talked about what my cousin Egypt told, what you told Cree that my cousin Egypt told you. So I just want to nip this in the bud and let it be known that, hey, 
my fiance did not cheat on me or if my fan or if he did cheat on me then you know we're working things out we're in counseling whatever i just i just kind of thought it was a little odd that she didn't address it just me but let's move on you guys and wrap the episode up all right you guys and then let's talk about tt and sean right so sean is back and tt wants to address you know wants to talk about how do they address this rumor me personally i feel like you address the rumor head on but you know they talk about it i do like what sean said in this situation and it's really interesting right when you think about it tt's mama she's not getting involved in this situation she's out of it but then you got her raggedy ass sister and sandy who technically if we're being honest is supposed to technically this situation is between, you know, TT and Egypt, but Sandy has managed to insert herself squarely in the middle of the situation. And it's very childish at this point. That's really what the gist of it is. It's childish as hell. So then, you know, he tells her that, you know, things have changed. And she then tells him that, you know, um, and when he says things have changed, he means things have changed within the family. And that's literally because of Sandy. Sandy is the reason that things have changed. Like, it makes no sense. Like, you are dismantling your family over this interloper that has come through. This gr interloper, this grifter, this con, this leech, this smooch, whatever you want to call her, whatever you want to call Samantha, like you are literally letting this cr sack of crap come in between you, your niece, and your, well, not your sister, but mostly your niece because the fact that Maureen still wants that, 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 those people at the wedding. Girl, why? Make it make sense. So, <clears throat> Like I said, she says she doesn't want to have the wedding on TV. I guess I can understand that. So then she says that, you know, since Brianna's having this event, she doesn't want to sit, you know, have a conversation with Brianna and talk to Brianna because at the party, she, the dinner party, she wants to address everything. I'm like, do you think that's a good idea? I mean, I guess it could be, but I don't know about that. And she's talking about, you know, she wants, she wants to set everything ablaze. I'm like, you should start by setting ablaze to those atrocious wigs that was on Sandy's head, that raggedy ass Don and Egypt's head. Set those ablaze and we'll be fine. So then we move over to wrap the episode up with Cree, right? So Cree is meeting with Luke, right? As well as the cousin and her sister. <clears throat> <coughs> so Cree tells Luke that about four years ago, they started trying to rebuild their relationship but somewhere along the lines, the communication stopped. And it's so interesting. Looking at Cree in this episode, it just, it was mirroring my life. It was literally mirroring my life. Because, let's see. My birth mother and I, we have had a, a, a up and down relationship since I was 16 years old well no yeah actually we have had an up and down relationship since i was 16 well 14. i found out about her when i was 14 years old from 14 to 18 it was <coughs> my bad y'all didn't mean to call me up but it was it was you know a little rocky at times but then from actually Yeah, 14 to 18. When I was 18, we tried to, you know, we tried it again. And it worked for a little bit. But then by the time I turned 20 years old, that's when the shit went down. That's when it, like, literally went downhill. I'm not going to tell you guys what our issue is. I may have said it once before, but I'm, I'm just not going to go too deep into what our issue is. Um... So yeah, it, it went downhill at tw when I turned 20, before I turned 20, 
I don't know, I was 20 years old at the time, so it went downhill then, because I was getting ready to turn 21. It went downhill then, and we, nope, we did not try. After that point, we stopped talking for a long time, but then my grandfather got sick, and we tried to be civil at that point, dealing with him. It was not civil. It was the furthest thing from civil. It was chaos. It was chaos. So, and then after my mother passed away, I tried to have another, I tried it again with her. And much like what Cree said, my mother's been gone for four years now. I reached out to her and the communication, it just, it, it sucks. It sucks. I text her. She either doesn't respond to me or she's very late to respond to me. Here lately, she's just... All right, you guys, sorry. There wasn't enough storage to keep recording. So, yeah. Here lately, she just... I'll reach out to her. She doesn't even... Re I reached out to her months ago. Actually, this time. I reached out to her about... It's been almost a year now. I haven't heard anything else from her. I've let it go. <clears throat> so, just listen to Cree talk. It just reminded me of her so much and Cree was just wondering like <coughs> excuse me y'all she was wondering why did the community <coughs> why did the communication stop and like I said I can I get where she I feel I'm, I'm I feel her so much because you wonder what did I say what did I do to you know make them stop talking to me but like I've said in plenty of reviews about her it's not us, it's not you, it's not me, it's literally her and him, your dad, my mother. So then Luke is in here talking about the fact that nobody reaches out to him on Father's Day. And she was like, I don't even know the last time you told me happy birthday. Now this scene right here is where I was like, oh Jesus Christ, this is literally mirroring my life. So Luke told her, Hell, I don't even know birthdays. I was like, oh my God. That reminded me of, so you guys remember, I just told you I found out about my family when I was 14 years old, right? So my birthday actually, when I got adopted, my birthday had came around. So it was a full year. No, 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 no. No, I was 13 when I found out about them. And then my birthday came in the summer and I turned 14. So, my birthday, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's July 16th. So, my mother, you know, my brother and, you know, I, we were talking about my birthday. And my biological mother said something that's, that just, it, it stayed with me for, you know, since I was 13 years old. It stayed with me and it's just something that I can never, ever let go. because I feel like she said that in a sense to hurt me. But it didn't hurt me, it just really just made me look at you crazy. So I have, a, <clears throat> I have a cousin, her nephew, that is born maybe a week or two after I was in July, right? <clears throat> so, like I said, we were talking about my birthday. She went once, she went and said to me, and she said it with the straight, <clears throat> Excuse me, and she said it with a straight face that, oh, I always get your birthday confused with Pooh Bear. I always get you and Pooh Bear's birthdays confused. I looked at her. You do what? She said, I get your birthday and Pooh Bear's birthdays confused. I want that. <coughs> Excuse me, I my throat. Okay, we're back. Sorry. So I want to ask her at that point when she said that, I want to ask her, who did you give birth to? Did you give birth to me or did you figure out a way to give birth to your nephew? Like that was the most confusing thing that I've ever heard in my life. Who did you give birth to? So yeah, Cree, your dad is a literal, he literally just looking at him talk to you Reminding me of my birth mother and what I would say to you is run. If you want to have a relationship with him, 
tread lightly. That's all I got to say. But that's the review, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware when I drop anything else. Share this video. And until the next one, stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. Wear your mask or not. Socially distance. Um, be safe in whatever you do. And be blessed, you guys. And I'll catch you guys later. All right, you guys. That's it. Bye, guys.